In the last 73 years, the UIA alone has represented the world. The United States unites architects from more than 100 countries and territories by the strength of diversity and partnership across the five regions of the UIA. At the COP21 conference, the UIA made calls in action to halt climate change. Secure public aid demand for sustainable solutions and investment. We initiate new solutions we have put towards new partnerships. For this, we look to students with its expertise as governments and local communities. is delighted to work with INVAR to promote resilient design through sharing the design ideas of bamboo architecture. Lastly, on the occasion of the COP26, I pledge to the architects of the world to acknowledge that using the time-tested traditional technology, innovat innovative ideas, and in the passive implementation process, there is a window of opportunity to shape our built environment and the cities in a way that reduces overall energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much.
ከጥሩ ቢኖርም ይቻላል የተለቀው ብራንች ኢቲኤም የተለቀው ቢኤክስፓይድ ነው Recording in progress.
bamboo and rattan, pride of nature, friend of mankind. With the aim to protect, cultivate, and exploit the world's bamboo and rattan resources, the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, INBAR, was established in 1997. INBAR is the first intergovernmental organization to host its headquarters in China and remains the only one to focus on promoting bamboo and rattan for sustainable development. INBAR's mission is to improve the well-being of producers and users of bamboo and rattan by consolidating, coordinating, and supporting strategic and adaptive research and development. Over the last two decades, INBAR has grown steadily and in April 2019 reached 45 member states. Our member states are spread across Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas. INBAR has regional offices in Cameroon, Ecuador, Ethiopia, Ghana, and India. To realize its mission, INBAR is active across different fields, such as environmental protection, poverty alleviation, and livelihood development. INBAR supports scientific and technological innovation, the cultivation and expansion of existing resources, downstream processing and utilization, and the promotion and use of a wide variety of diversified products, as well as showcasing the positive contribution to the development of a green economy, poverty alleviation, and livelihood improvement. Cultural products and heritage can enhance quality of life and protect, enhance, and expand bamboo and rattan culture. INBAR is an observer to the United Nations General Assembly and has recently achieved great success during its 20th anniversary celebrations and 2018's Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress. Heads of state from China, Ethiopia, Ecuador, Colombia, Cameroon, and Madagascar, as well as heads of high-level agencies of the United Nations, expressed support for these events in different forms or congratulated INBAR for its increasing international visibility and influence. Looking towards the future, INBAR has formulated a development plan for 2015 to 2030. We will work with member states and international partners to help achieve the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and align with plans for the Belt and Road Initiative and South-South Cooperation. INBAR will forge a unique path to make a real positive difference and work together towards a more equitable and greener world. Warm greetings from UIA. I'm Jose Luis Cortez, president of the International Union of Architects. For the last 73 years, the UIA alone has represented the world's architects, now estimated to around 3.2 million. The UIA unites architects from more than 100 countries and territories by the strength of diversity and partnership across the five regions of the UIA. At the COP21-24, when the UIA made calls in action to halt climate change, governments, civil society, and the private sector have recognized that the built environment is a contributor to climate change. UN declared year 2021 as Climate Action Year. We have to implement climate action for cities in terms of climate adaptation, mitigation, and response. Coupled with the pandemic situation, we are examining closely the immediate and pressing future of our built environment and human settlements. By 2030, we have to implement 
is Sustainable Development Goals to achieve changes in next eight years is a global challenge. In recognition of the urgency of the situation, the UIA has formed an independent commission on sustainable development goals named UIA SDG Commission to influence architects towards sustainable, resilient, climate friendly, and carbon neutral design. To facilitate the challenge, we accept UN Habitat's new urban agenda as our own, and we endorse United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and we pledge to achieve carbon neutrality in our communities and buildings. The UIA acknowledges the efforts of all stakeholders of built environment to make change. Similarly, governments, civil society, researchers, and the private sector can help secure public demand for sustainable solutions and investment. To initiate new solutions, we have to explore new partnerships. For this, we look to INVAR with its expertise assisting governments, businesses, and local communities to identify new and innovative uses for bamboo and rattan as a building material across more than 50 countries in global South Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The UIA is delighted to work with INVAR to promote resilient design through sharing the design ideas of bamboo architecture. Lastly, on the occasion of the COP26, I pledge to the architects of the world to acknowledge that using the time-tested traditional technology innovative ideas, and in the passive implementation process, there is a window of opportunity to shape our built environment and the cities in a way that reduces overall energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much.
Pwede siya magpalit. Bamboo and rattan, pride of nature, friend of mankind. With the aim to protect, cultivate, and exploit the world's bamboo and rattan resources, the International Bamboo and Rattan Organization, INBAR, was established in 1997. INBAR is the first intergovernmental organization to host its headquarters in China and remains the only one to invoke us on promoting bamboo and rattan for sustainable development. INBAR's mission is to improve the well-being of producers and users of bamboo and rattan by consolidating, coordinating, and supporting strategic and adaptive research and development. Over the last two decades, INBAR has grown steadily and in April 2019 reached 45 member states. Our member states are spread across Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas. INBAR has regional offices in Cameroon, Ecuador, Ethiopia, Ghana, and India. To realize its mission, INBAR is active across different fields, such as environmental protection, poverty alleviation, and livelihood development. INBAR supports scientific and technological innovation, the cultivation and expansion of existing resources, downstream processing and utilization, and the promotion and use of a wide variety of diversified products, as well as showcasing the positive contribution to the development of a green economy, poverty alleviation, and livelihood improvement. Cultural products and heritage can enhance quality of life and protect, enhance, and expand bamboo and rattan culture. INBAR is an observer to the United Nations General Assembly and has recently achieved great success during its 20th anniversary celebrations and 2018's Global Bamboo and Rattan Congress. Heads of state from China, Ethiopia, Ecuador, Colombia, Cameroon, and Madagascar, as well as heads of high-level agencies of the United Nations expressed support for these events in different forms or congratulated INBAR for its increasing international visibility and influence. Looking towards the future, INBAR has formulated a development plan for 2015 to 2030, 
we will work with member states and international partners to help achieve the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and align with plans for the Belt and Road Initiative and South-South Cooperation. INVAR will forge a unique path to make a real positive difference and work together towards a more equitable and greener world. Warm greetings from UIA. I'm Jose Luis Cortez, president of the International Union of Architects. For the last 73 years, the UIA alone has represented the world's architects, now estimated to around 3.2 million. The UIA unites architects from more than 100 countries and territories by the strength of diversity and partnership across the five regions of the UIA. At the COP21-24, when the UIA made calls in action to halt climate change, governments, civil society, and the private sector have recognized that the built environment is a contributor to climate change. UN declared year 2021 as the Climate Action Year. We have to implement climate action for cities in terms of climate adaptation, mitigation, and response. Coupled with the pandemic situation, we are examining closely the immediate and pressing future of our built environment and human settlements. By 2030, we have to implement the Sustainable Development Goals to achieve changes in next eight years is a global challenge. In recognition of the urgency of the situation, the UIA has formed an independent commission on sustainable development goals named UIA SDG Commission to influence architects towards sustainable, resilient, friendly, to facilitate the challenge, we accept UN Habitat's new urban agenda as our own, and we endorse United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and we pledge to achieve carbon neutrality in our communities and buildings. The UIA acknowledges the efforts of all stakeholders of built environment to make change. Similarly, governments, civil society, researchers, and the private sector can help secure public demand for sustainable solutions and investment. To initiate new solutions, we have to explore new partnerships. For this, we look to INVAR with its expertise assisting governments, businesses, and local communities to identify new and innovative uses for bamboo and rattan as a building material across more than 50 countries in global South Asia, Africa, and Latin America. The UIA is delighted to work with INVAR to promote resilient design through sharing the design ideas of bamboo architecture. Lastly, on the occasion of the COP26, I pledge to the architects of the world to acknowledge that using the time-tested traditional technology innovative ideas, and in the passive implementation process, there is a window of opportunity to shape our built environment and the cities in a way that reduces overall energy consumption and greenhouse gas emissions. Thank you very much.
Kain say for maso. Hello, hello. My voice is coming out. Ah, we can start. Okay, we can start our meeting. So, good evening, good day, everyone. Here we kick off the 2021 International Online Seminar by Inba. This is the second session of the series. I'm Wu Jingqi from Inba. I really want to thank my colleagues. Coming, Madam Liu Kewei, the Global Bamboo Construction Program Coordinator of INBA. I feel so happy to meet all of you in this field to learn more about bamboo as a construction material. In 2021, our online bamboo series is sustainable construction material. Last Thursday, we had a really successful kickoff meeting. In the first kickoff meeting, we had three experts talking about architecture use of bamboo, attracting 500 online attendees from 70 countries with good positive action. This time, our topic is the technologies and the recent development of contemporary bamboo structures in China, we have Professor Yang Jun from Tsinghua University, Professor Qing Ling from Chongqing University, and Director of Technology Center of Xi'an Construction Engineering Green Construction Group, Mr. Peng Baoming. And each will have 20 minutes for speech and followed by a 30 minute Q&A. Our bilingual and the trilingual YouTube video recordings will be up loaded to the Inba YouTube account. Now let's begin. Our first speaker is Professor Yang Jun. Professor Yang Jun is a professor from the civil engineering at Tsinghua University. He obtained his bachelor degree in structural engineering and PhD in disaster prevention and mitigation engineering at Tsinghua University in 1996 and 2001, respectively. And after that, he stayed as a faculty in the School of Civil Engineering to initiate the teaching, research, and practice on underground space engineering and structural engineering. So his topic is technology roadmap for the development of bamboo structure in China based on bibliometric analysis and expert survey. Now you can begin. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm from Tsinghua University, the School of Civil Engineering and Water Resources. The topic of today is the bibliometric analysis and expert survey the technology roadmap for the development of bamboo structure in China. The major part of this work has been published in last month issue of the Journal of Civil Engineering. This issue is a special issue to commemorate the 19th anniversary of the birth of academician Chen Zhaoyuan. The special issue contains 15 papers written by Mr. Chen's disciples, colleagues, and partners, focusing on the areas in which Mr. Chen was involved and made outstanding contributions during his lifetime. We selected this one in the field of bamboo and the wood structures. 
The research was supported by consulting project of the Chinese Academy of Engineering of which Mr. Chen was also the project leader who organized the project and developed the technical lines of research during his lifetime. And it was undertaken by Tsinghua University in collaboration with the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Shadow University of Construction, and International Network for Bamboo and Rattan. After Mr. Chen's passing, Academician Ning Jianguo took over the task of project leader, and I was the contact person for this project. During the project research, many other experts were interviewed or filled out questionnaires carefully, and I would like to thank them all. I will report on four main aspects, backgrounds, bibliometric analysis, expert survey, and suggestions. In 2017, Academician Nie Jianguang team published an article research on the development trend and the path of China civil and structural engineering technology 2035 in the Journal of Chinese Academy of Engineering, in which it was pointed out that expected by 2035, the field of civil and structural engineering will fully realize the development vision of green and low carbon sustainability. Modernization and intelligence transformation and upgrading of industrial structure and the quality improvement of livelihood production. Bamboo building should be at least in the green, low carbon, sustainable industrial transformation and upgrading and the people's livelihood protection and other aspects fully consistent with the development vision I talked about. And bamboo has its own unique advantages. What are the unique advantages? First, bamboo is a renewable material and its carbon sequestration efficiency is higher than that of wood. And secondly, China is the main bamboo producing, producing area and bamboo forests are widely distributed. Once again, bamboo structure is very much matched with China's current rural revitalization plan, which helps improve living conditions, develop tourism and vacation industries, and can increase farmers' income. In addition, bamboo has unique cultural values and aesthetic interest, which is unique to China. From ancient times to the present, bamboo has been praised by very many poems and songs. But the natural material has its two sides. The negative side is that the cross-section of round bamboo log is relatively small for building components. And although it can be used in bundles by some means, it can pose some connection and other problems. And naturally grown materials also have a variety of defects and the dispersion of physical and the mechanical indices is large, resulting in low design values to ensure adequate reliability. And also natural materials are susceptible to insects. It have poor corrosion resistance, especially when exposed to water, can hardly be used in open air scenarios. For example, this bamboo bundle connected by a screw in the picture and the rainwater enters the inner cavity after the screw breaks and the wall, causing the bamboo material to become moldy and discolored. Although the engineered bamboo products can eliminate defects to a certain extent, increase the cross-section and reduce dispersion through quality control to a certain extent, but the amount of glue used is relatively large, and the mainstream is organic glue, which will cause environmental pollution during production and use, and the fire resistance and the durability are also relatively poor. And also there's a lack of good technical standards and the low level construction and industrialization. These are the bottlenecks that limit the development of bamboo buildings. Therefore, it is proposed to recommend a strategy for the development of bamboo construction engineering in China based on the three aspects of material, non-hazardousness, good design standard, and construction industrialization at the technical level. At the engineering level, we also try to apply the innovative ideas at the technical level in demonstration projects. So, a technology roadmap approach to the development of bamboo architecture in China tries to answer three core questions. Where is it now? Where do we go? And how to get there? The first question is to understand the current situation, which can be analyzed by existing literature and patents. Where to go can be solved based on the understanding of development path through questionnaires and expert interviews and get some quantitative and non-quantitative results. 
The last question is to deal with the development pathway. And on the basis of the previous work, that is, the information is fed back to experts who will determine the development pathway through discussions. The quantitative analysis tool we used was the Intelligent Support System for Strategic Consulting by the Chinese Academy of Science uh, Engineering. We just call it ISS system. The core database is the web of science used for literature database. The search keywords include all these combinations and the search time is between 1976 to 2020, a total of 2,100 relevant papers were found. And we excluded some paper manually, which are obviously not related to bamboo architecture. For example, discussing the structure of bamboo cellular DNA or cellular walls. So the 2000 papers are the data pool for our subsequent bibliometric studies. Overall, the number of papers published in the field of bamboo construction worldwide has a clear tendency to increase year by year, indicating that relative research is being carried out in large numbers and technological innovation is an active period. The number of papers published in the field of bamboo construction increased significantly after 2007 and 8, indicating that the field became active around 2008, indicating that the field entered an innovative phase which is related to the global development of modified engineered bamboo as a building material. This is of course is inseparable from the global application and the development of modified engineering bamboo. And of course, the increase in the absolute number does not always tell the full story. We have made observation that about the number, for example, the architectural papers per 1000 architecture papers increased from 1.8 in 2000 to 5.8 in 2020. It does indicate that the research further in bamboo architecture is rising in the field. And this graph gives the number of papers published by countries during this period. And the top 10 country combined also account for 96% of the total number of papers published worldwide. And among them, China, the United States and Japan are in the top three positions. Let's use 2008 as a cutoff point, we can see a major increase of number of papers. Let's look at the period between 76 and 2008, between 09 and 2020, you can see the breakdown of papers published by different countries. And you can see that in 1976 to 2008, the top three are US, China, and Japan. And in the second period, top three are China, USA, and India. And in the previous sector, we were working on raw bamboo, only very few paper on engineering, engineered modified bamboo, because at the time bamboo was not used extensively at the time. And China shifted focus onto this after 2008. And in the second period, you can see, China has published half of all papers in this field in the world, which means that China intensified its investment on the R&D of bamboo as a construction material. And also I want to point out that in the second period, Malaysia and Indonesia were among the top 10, meaning that these main bamboo producing countries are taking a new perspective on using bamboo as a modern construction material. And also I try to show the top 10 institutions in publication, these Chinese research institutes here, the top four are forestry research institutes, colleges or universities. The other five are comprehensive universities. And also I try to search the word cloud. You can look at the heat map of research foci. For example, the keywords are mechanical properties, combination, strength, engineered bamboo, and carbon. These are eye-catching heat words. 
And also let's look at the different periods. From 76 to 2008, the keywords, less than 3% was about engineered bamboo. But since 2009 onwards, laminated bamboo, engineered bamboo, account for 12%, which means that engineered bamboo as a new construction material has drawn the attention of researchers. And also through literature analysis, we also understand the hotspots for bamboo construction engineering studies, including new materials, processing processes, adhesives, bamboo fibers, nodes, and performance studies. The performance studies include durability, fire resistance, and mechanical performance. And also, we studied, we had a special studies, thematic studies on the mechanical properties, fire resistance, and nodes of bamboo. And in recent years, the National Science Foundation of China has funded more bamboo construction related projects in 2020, 15 projects were initiated with a total funding number growing year by year. Most of them are in the disciplines of engineering and materials science and life science or forestry studies. The themes focus on bamboo modification, fiber reinforcement, engineered bamboo components and systems and search and use a bamboo in combination with other building materials like wood and steel. And based on the previous literature review, we designed a questionnaire. And we have uh, distributed questionnaires to the experts related to bamboo construction, including researchers, architecture, uh, engineer, structural engineers, business leaders, public affairs managers, Quality is better than quantity. We distributed 50 copies and uh, received back same amount. The questionnaires were multiple choices and the questions and options used to finding the previous literature research. I would uh, present the statistical results of this questionnaire. Talking about the strengths of the bamboo for construction, majority of experts believe that the biggest advantage of bamboo is it's naturally renewable and can be regenerated faster than wood. One expert also believed that uh, bamboo construction it has the carbon sink ability. The second largest option mostly chosen by the experts is that in China, bamboo can be replacing timber production because it's a major bamboo producing country. And the texture and its high strength as well as richness in cultural heritage to name just a few. And what are the weakness to be further improved for bamboo construction? 82% and 70% of experts believe uh, the durability and the fire resistance need to be improved. Over 50% also choose connection reliability and uh, easiness for use. 46% were also concerned about the environmental friendliness of the glued materials. Talking about the hurdles uh, encountered in the promotion of bamboo architecture, 84% of the experts believe that uh, in the industry, uh, the standards of bamboo construction is lacking. Second is lack of a price advantage because it never reached the industrial level mass production. Some other experts believe it's difficult to go, go through those red tapes, for example, fire-related approval. And the quantity of demonstration projects are insufficient. Uh, we have a single choice question. 
uh, comparing to the engineered uh, versus uh, the round bamboo. No single expert chose the round bamboo. 60% of experts thought that engineered bamboos represented by glued and reconstituted bamboo had a better future. 40% believe uh, um, they, the two can be blended. Through the literature review, um, questionnaires and expert interviews, we put forward the following recommendations for the bamboo construction engineering development in China. We think green high performance modern bamboo construction engineering should be the core development goal. In 2035, we should reach the following four development levels, R and D a series of innovative bamboo building materials a structure system and uh, come up with the technical standard system. Second, we should develop green uh, glue materials and other key technologies. Third, we should widely promote it and uh, apply these uh, bamboo materials to replace other materials nationwide and uh, to make the general public more acceptive to the bamboo materials. Fourthly, we should consolidate China's leading position in the field of uh, bamboo architecture and construction. In order to realize above mentioned goals, uh, we need to accomplish four tasks. The first is R&D on the green environmental friendly, durable and fire resistant bamboo materials for construction and also the standard system to be established and the building structure system with ability to withstand various disasters. Fourthly, to promote multiple systems, multiple application scenarios and large scale bamboo building demonstration projects. On the national level, we need strategic support include the following, creating enabling conditions for bamboo construction enterprises to expand their scale because uh, enterprises are the core for innovation without a certain volume or scale they cannot uh, proceed with uh, this innovation according to our survey the largest bamboo industry in china the annual turnover is less than 1 billion rmb cannot compete with the US industry because according to their uh, annual report, their turnover uh, reached uh, 7.5 billion US dollars. Uh, and in the history before the COVID, it reached even 20 billion US dollars. Having said that, China still has the uh, advantage to scale up the production. This is the total turnover in China's uh, building sector. You can see from year 2000 to 2020. By 2020, it reached uh, 26.4 trillion RMB yuan. So if bamboo represents 1%, then it still uh, amounts to 20 to 30 billion RMB yuan industry. And we have uh, CS, CEC and other industries uh, that are already at a moderately large scale. Second, we need to have uh, strategic supports uh, to start uh, establish the national key labs and national engineering centers. And we should uh, consider to incorporate engineered bamboo into the bamboo building and construction technical standards. Because uh, engineered bamboo comparing to the round bamboo, they have uh, uh, not so big uh, discrepancies comparing to the timber material. Fourthly, in order to promote the bamboo construction demonstration projects, we should uh, 
promote pilot projects and by wrapping up the experiences, we can upscale. And uh, fifthly is to promote international cooperation and exchanges. So that's uh, pretty much what, what I wanted to share with you. But I still uh, want to spend a, a couple of minutes to share with you some of the case studies and demonstration projects. On the May 21st this year, in Dali of Yunnan, it suffers uh, from the earthquake uh, 6.2. And we speed up uh, our relief uh, approaches and uh, to help the local villagers uh, to establish um, these uh, bamboo structure houses, which is much uh, better and stronger than the disaster relief tents. So it can improve the comfortness in the living conditions of those uh, suffered population. This is a governmental led Yibin International Bamboo Products Trade Center project. Uh, later on, my colleague would elaborate on this project, which is um, a steel bamboo combination structure and bamboo structure fire protection and durability treatment uh, being applied as well. With regard to the standards, we also made very good breakthroughs. Uh, recently, China has uh, issued uh, uh, some standards and codes, including the fire code for building design. Because for the fire department, uh, uh, they believe uh, these uh, bamboo, just as uh, the timbers are the uh, easy to catch fire. So according to the original requirements, uh, the highest uh, bamboo construction building is uh, three stories. But in the newly amended code and regulation, it can be raised to nine stories, which is a very good breakthrough. This is uh, from Professor Zhang Xin's team in Shandong Construction University. They started from the lab test, including the uh, pilot and demonstration and upscale. Uh, you can see this is uh, the inorganic glue. Although using the organic glue, still keep the good results, and uh, which is very remarkable. The um, surface still retains the texture of bamboo. Now they are conducting an, a comprehensive research on the strands, node connection, durability, and the fire resistance. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Professor Yang. Very comprehensive introduction from the quantitative review of the literature desktop research, plus the interviews by the experts. You have the theoretical and the practical elaborations on the advantages, weakness, and the challenges of the bamboo construction industries in China. You also talk about the trends and the hot pots, hot spots for the future's strategic development. I want to strongly promote a book to you. China Modern Bamboo Buildings. Professor Yang also talked about this uh, is one of their achievements. It is a joint uh, product uh, together with uh, Shanghai institutions and uh, Yimba. And my colleague uh, Liu Qinghui would uh, uh, draw down the web link uh, at the chat box, you can freely uh, download this book. 
And Tsinghua University is uh, collaborating with foreign partners to produce the English translation. And uh, let's wait and see. Let's work together to uh, draw hands to boost uh, the bamboo construction. Personally, I'm a lay person, but after listened carefully about Professor Yang's uh, lecture and presentation, I feel very much touched and moved. I want to make my own contribution to this industry. Uh, I witnessed that uh, we have an increasing number of attendees. I feel very thrilled and excited. I want to briefly introduce to the new friends. Now you are watching the virtual events 2021 international online seminar, Bamboo, a very sustainable construction material. Just now we just listened to the Professor Yang's uh, uh, presentation from the uh, School of uh, Civil Engineering of uh, Tsinghua University. He was talking about uh, the technology roadmap for the development of bamboo structure in China. Uh, you can review this uh, recorded uh, meeting from the YouTube later on. Next speaker is Qin Lin. Qin Lin is the associate professor from School of Architecture and Urban Planning at Chongqing. And uh, her teaching uh, research practices areas are in building technology, rural construction, large span architecture, and medical and healthcare architecture. She has more than 20 years of experiences in rural field work, uh, especially in the rural construction. Now, let's welcome Professor Qin Lin. Can you all see my shared screen? Yes. Thank you. I'm from Chongqing University. I'm very delighted. I feel so privileged to share my ideas with you today. Professor Yang Jing's presentation has been so hugely informative and he's done a good job in summarizing and disseminating knowledge. So I probably want to address three things in my presentation. I'm an architect. Professor Yang is approaching materials and uh, the structural perspective as an architect. I just want to tell you more about how we experimented with all types of building materials. We've done a lot of tests in the countryside. Uh, I love bamboo, but uh, my love is not limited to bamboo. I love a combination of all kinds of natural construction materials. So as an architect, I really want to experiment with everything. That is an architectural point of view. And recently, my team has worked on a Bai Zhishan mountain. We provided the design of a bamboo structure there. And also, if time permits, I'd love to discuss a few techniques. So first, a combination of various materials. Because we want to do some interesting things in the countryside. Um, I mean, you have to bring the countryside of China into modernity. The market has preferences for traditional vernacular architecture. They have a strong emotional bond with the traditional things. I mean, it's just like a mortar, a brick and mortar, and then you pad it with exterior decoration. It's full of uncertainties, but the traditional architecture itself is a representation of culture. No matter how you decorate it itself, its form and pattern constitute a independent style already. We have experimented with um, uh, cement and the rammed earth, a brick and mortar configured in different ways. And of course, today I will talk about bamboo too. This is uh, architectural design in Changzhen, a local ethnic town 
because they want to build a new town area, but we want to make it traditional looking. We really don't want to bring in, you know, architects from the urban side or local building construction workers. We just want to bring local artisans into the picture, old carpenters. We want them to be part of this process. We hope that in this process, we can have a kind of set where the artisans, the older generation artisans can fully leverage their ability in this new world. But of course, we want to make good use of reinforced concrete. It is a wooden structure, but uh, in many massive uh, infrastructure, truly you have to use reinforced concrete, a reinforced concrete bridge. And also reinforced concrete sometimes can be very moldable. Uh, because, you know, in the countryside, they don't really have a lot of cutting edge equipment or machinery. We want to make sure that we bring the reinforced concrete into the uh, countryside, but they can use very low end technology to use it. This is a tourist information center. We want it to look modern, but it's full of culture. There is no wood or bamboo in it, but the form and the shape are very much consistent with the local culture. For example, I'm showing you this. This is a tourist center. This is a display atrium, but inside atrium, you can see we have the mode on the left, the computer, and on the right is the real picture. Basically, we have some uh, filler walls inside a reinforced concrete framework. You know, this is a picture of a construction and the built situation. And also we're using rammed earth. Uh, in the same village, the three cases in the same village, the rammed earth is very much closely related to bee breeding. We, this is a public education uh, stadium. We're using local rammed earth to be the foundation. So it is a very interesting exhibition wall. And on the top, you can see we have a bamboo pavilion on top. You can see this is how it is built. These artisans are local artisans. We want to make sure that the local artisans they can, we sort of link them up with the modern management system. Mm -hmm. And also this is traditional material. We hope that it can be very modern and it can be filled into the modern space. And we sort of infuse the modern ideas into traditional artisans, traditional crafts. This is how we look at this design. And also we were testing with steel structure. This is the pedestrian bridge. I was saying that uh, we were using a bee exhibition hall and they have a lot of Chinese bee. It's a big industry. Honey industry is a very big industry there. So we are using the steel structure. We can also convert it into wood or bamboo, no problem. But also we want to bring some modern materials, uh, modern structures to be juxtaposed side by side with traditional crafts and materials. I had two natural science funded projects focusing on the dissemination of technology driven architecture. We hope to do some promotional work here. This is the effect picture. This is the real onsite picture. When I was building this structure, we noticed that, you know, conceptually, there were a lot of technical barriers, but sometimes we were just worrying too much. And yes, we want to use this as a demonstration, but after it was built, local people, they love new materials, new spatial designs. They love this. It is pedestrian bridge, 
but people like it. It's very modern. It's a new place with a new style and new materials. And the local citizens welcome this. I think they have a lot of vernacular buildings locally. It can bring a lot of uh, public pedestrian flow and the visitor flow. We also want it to be very open, very open-ended. And also it can be a good landscape. It should be part of the landscape. No matter what materials or technology you resort to, you can see this is a local marketplace. And uh, when it's idle, people can dry stuff, dry produce. But I want to see through this building to see the mountains behind and the rivers flowing beside. This is a real picture. And also on the roof, you can actually walk into the roof and watch the mountains and the rivers. I think we use technology, but in a way to manifest the local flavors. And also I want to share with you the next case. This is the Baizhi Mountain Bamboo Architecture. It is in Guizhou, in Baizhi Mountain. Baizhi Mountain has a high altitude, around 1,400 meters above sea level. And behind it, there's a holiday resort. And you can see the cliff. The cliff behind is a holiday scenic spot. They have a continuous cliff side. This is an accident. When we went there, we didn't want to work on this building. When we were there, the project owners wanted us to use bamboo or bamboo materials to sort of make a trailer park. But when we came here, we talked to them and we changed our ideas. Why we wanted to do this? Why it is right in front of the cliffside? Because it is very open. You can see through to the cliffs, right? In places where you have a wonderful scenery, you must be fully integrated into the environment, bamboo, has a lot of cultural connotation. Many people that feel emotionally bonded, connected to them. If you use iron and steel, people don't feel a sense of affinity to this. This is the foundation. It's located on the platform in front of the cliff. It has a really large width and behind it, they expect to build some holiday resort buildings. It's going to be a kind of a highland resort. I'm in Chongqing. In Chongqing, summertime is really hot, but if you go to here, it's right beside Guizhou Mountain. You go over this mountain, the Jingfo Mountain Range, you will enter Guizhou. The temperature gap is huge. People come here for holiday retreat in summertime. So basically it is right beside a highland highway. And we try to move around the place and see whether it is integrated into the local landscape. First time we went there, we were trying to find a good site. When we were moving down, we were asking, the project owner, what do you want to build? I feel that my mind is opened. I can just stand there forever. And the landscape is really intriguing. I, I'm just interested what they want to build. It could be a good place for the architecture. They told me that I want to build a toilet here, right where I stand. You know, here, it is the lowest point of the whole place. And on the ground, they buried all types of pipes or sewage pipes, water pipes. They also had a lot of uh, corridor of uh, um, building, uh, cables, etc. 
Mm. If we put a public toilet here, it is really, really weird. So I asked him, is it possible to do something different? And he said that I need to have a public facility with a public restroom. I would say that, what if we build a cafeteria, a coffee shop, and inside the coffee shop, we can have a small toilet, right? So we decided to do that. We just built a bamboo structure here. And now you can see this. We say probe into the distance. Because this is where you see the scenery. No matter what way you use to build, you have to serve the people, the users. You want to see the far side, and then you want to give people the elements. You need to have scenery platforms, viewing platforms. And I told you that the marketplace, the roof, is accessible. You cannot go to the roof, but we give you viewing platforms. It's a very important foundation of the bamboo structure. This is the viewing platform after completion. And it's sort of extending forward. You see the foundation, the far mountains. And also you can actually see the sun setting behind the mountain range. And sometimes when it's already evening, people always come here to take pictures. The traditional materials, the traditional architectural technology gives people a lot of cultural and emotional affinity. And with such a beautiful scenery, people want to come here to take pictures. They want to be fully involved participate in this landscape. A good architecture makes people a component of the architecture. You can see there are a lot of activities against the bamboo shed. People are doing exercises, sword exercises. But when we took photos, you can see he's not just uh, practicing sword exercises over there, but want to record the activity and uh, to have future dissemination of his activity. In the dawn and the early morning, you can see the kite flyers and at different moments, throughout the whole day. You can see the people themselves become the landscape and they embedded into the landscape and merged together with landscape. We have two dimensions. This is east facing dimension. You can see there's no big uh, terrace or height difference. So it's close to nature landscape. And you can see bamboo construction is uh, hiding in the nature, very low profile. So you can see from different perspectives, uh, different uh, views. When you view from a close site, you can see these uh, west looking pedestal. Uh, it also shows the vertical 3D dimensions of the uh, view platform. A lot of details and different scales. You can see the construction per se becomes the landscape and also embark the utilization of the bamboo. You can see these uh, vision height differences. As I said, this is a blended structure with the concrete and the bamboo. We constructed this uh, 
pedestal. And from the side, you couldn't see the road, vehicle road, because it's on the other side of the cliff. This is our team members. We have two designers and two architects. Uh, our team together with Italian architect uh, Marusha, we completed Yanqing uh, Yimba and the Bamboo Exhibition Hall. So these are the two architects from my team. And we had different uh, design plans at the beginning. Uh, one of the designs is a bamboo forest. You can see this is very modern, very clean, but uh, we feel some obstacles in the implementation because uh, it might uh, evolve into steel plus bamboo blended structure. But in this very project, we want to uh, show completely the uh, culture, nature of the round bamboo. So although it seems uh, very clean and uh, original, uh, we abandoned this plan at last. This uh, is uh, the east side. This is the west side of the construction. It's the dark side, shading side. So the basis for bamboo pillars, you can see it's a kind of uh, cascading terrace systems. You can see this is just like different uh, steps and stages from the lower height to the higher top. You can see the different views. We have um, these uh, six meters plus 12 meters plus six meters. And we also have uh, three, eight meters uh, steel uh, concrete structures. From the back side, you can see these are the uh, houses for vacations. This is the inner space. You can still have a quite good view from the inner space as well. This is the integrated uh, result. It had a very good uh, sunset, day sight, daylight. But there's uh, some uh, difficulties. Uh, these piers and pillars, uh, you know, is four meters. The construction engineers, uh, they talk different scenarios and the plans. Now we are uh, still observing whether this uh, pillar is uh, strong enough. And we use uh, normally the 10 centimeters in diameter bamboo. And altogether, the length is approximately 15,000 meters. Uh, and the uh, construction period lasts uh, 60 days, uh, including the interruption by a 10 day heavy storms. You can see there are a lot of nodes. I personally dislike those nodes because it's a kind of intrusive and disruptive uh, method. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, rainfalls uh, and uh, storms, uh, it's mountainous areas. Uh, some of the structures are uh, prefabricated uh, structures so we can have on-site adjustment and uh, installment so people can stand on the roof we have the developers owners and the designer teams together and they just want to check the thunder uh, proof so it's not open to the public it's for the technical check purposes Next, I want to talk about some technical issues because some experts talk about uh, the bamboo materials are very flexible. When we do the connection, how could we connect flexible bamboo with glasses or other rigid structures? I personally dislike the nose as I already explained, but it's only 
a kind of ideal expectations without any nodes. We did some pioneer work. This is the earthquake uh, relief tents. Uh, Professor Yang also talked about this is uh, the second year after Wuntran earthquake. Uh, uh, my students uh, together uh, with my team uh, constructed these uh, uh, relief tent uh, together with bamboos because uh, China, after all, is a producing bamboo producing country. How could we make better use of the bamboos? Uh, we should take advantage of those uh, advantages of bamboo from the production to uh, livelihood and lifestyle. Some of the uh, processes, including the shading processes. So bamboo together uh, with the film or plastic film and even quilt uh, can form a very good uh, instant relief tent. Those nodes and the connectors are the re reserves uh, before the uh, disasters because it's prefabricated nodes. Uh, so if there's any earthquake or disaster happened, we can uh, distribute those prefabricated uh, nodes uh, to the sites. And then they have uh, individual units and the individual units can be connected by these uh, nodes and joints. Uh, to be clear, those joints and nodes uh, should be flexible uh, to make a good uh, connection between the steel uh, versus bamboo. As I said, the node should be flexible. During our class uh, discussions with some graduate students, we had uh, some debates. Uh, we talk about uh, the uh, roof forms uh, and the uh, deformation of single complex uh, roof forms. Uh, because uh, we need to consider the three dimensions uh, and uh, bamboo is connecting with uh, glass. One is flexible, another is rigid. So for the deformation, there are different uh, ways uh, and uh, channels, but the rationales behind is the same. And also for the waterproof, those detailed aspects. So if you are interested, uh, you should, uh, uh, dig deep on the flexible, uh, these uh, simple roof forms and the uh, complex roof forms. Uh, maybe you can get some uh, enlightenment. In conclusion, I just want to share with you the following points. We want to try out different types of new materials and uh, especially to advance uh, those new materials and uh, combine the new materials uh, with uh, conventional uh, materials. For the architect, uh, they should uh, closely follow the market trends and also to have this market transition. As Professor Yang said, Our team has been engaged uh, into different projects, try to break the uh, conventional projects boundary. Of course, uh, the reasonable, reasonable range. When we engaged in the Yanqing, Yinba, Expo Halls, uh, we feel difficulties and challenges on the fire uh, prevention and control because we didn't find on spot the water sources for fire uh, control. So we did some feasibility studies, uh, whether those fire prevention and control rely on the integrated approaches or methods like fire retardants and the other materials or purely on the bamboo. So we did some dispersal uh, analysis on the fire prevention and control on site. So from the architect point of view, uh, 
we should uh, aim for more diversified application and development of bamboo materials. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Qin. You are right on time. Much appreciated. We always say theory comes out of uh, practices. Uh, Ms. Qin has been uh, engaged uh, in uh, different uh, construction building materials. Uh, talk about the innovative application and uh, folded uh, bamboo sheds and uh, disaster relief uh, bamboo tents. You tap into the potentials of bamboo materials, also highlight uh, the status and the importance of bamboo materials. Again, I'm a lay person. I love very much the bamboo constructions and architects because it showcases uh, the well combination between the innovative technologies with uh, traditional conventional cultures and materials. They are mutually enhanced. I study your presentation ahead of this workshop. I was uh, uh, surprised about the flexibility and the spirits of bamboo. And uh, you talk about the Yanqing uh, uh, exhibition hall. I personally followed and uh, witnessed the whole construction cycle. There were some uh, challenges and the difficulties uh, faced, but uh, in the end, in Yanqing, our export hall was a star. Uh, pavilion or uh, star hall or, uh, attracted a lot of visitors. I feel very proud. So in the future, if uh, opportunity arises, I want to have a close look uh, to your uh, constructions of bamboo on various sites. Uh, again, welcome uh, the new attendees. So today our topic is the technologies and recent development of contemporary bamboo structures in China. Just now we had Professor Qing Ling, the Professor of School of Architecture and Urban Planning at Chongqing University. If you missed her presentation, you can go to our YouTube account and things will be uploaded after today's meeting. Next speaker is Peng Baoning, Director of Technology Center of Xi'an Construction Engineering Green Construction Group Co Limited. And also he is a registered and a licensed architectural designer of China. And he has 25 years of experience in architectural and structural design and has deep practice and experience in all kinds of steel structures and special structures. His topic is large scale steel bamboo hybrid structure application. Okay, can you hear me? Go ahead, please. Okay, great. Go ahead, please. Can I bring it to full screen? So good day, everyone. I'm Peng Baoning. I'm from the Xi'an Construction Engineering. Just now, Professor Yang talk about the Yibing International Bamboo Products Trading Center. So I was the designer of this project. And uh, my company was the EPC for this project. We were deeply involved in this project. So let me tell you more about this project.
So I will talk about the six stages of this project. I will skip some details if necessary. It is using bamboo structure. It also has some unique structural designs. I will focus on the use of bamboo in this project. Okay, I want to give you an overview of this project. The Yibing International Bamboo Products Trading Center is the world's first large-scale steel bamboo hybrid structure because we are talking about bamboo calm. And uh, laminated bamboo and steel hybrid structure are many. Total floor space is around 13,000 square meters, located in Yibing city of Sichuan province, China. Yibing is what we call the Southern Sichuan Bamboo Sea. This project is uh, on the highway connecting Yibing City to the South Sichuan Bamboo Sea. It's an integration of oriental aesthetics and modern architecture design. And the day of completion became a landmark building on the main road leading to the South Sichuan Bamboo Sea. Uh, this is the right in front of the lobby. And also I want to show acknowledgements to conceptual design, Beijing Zhongzhu cultural design. And my company uh, basically implemented the drawing design. And also we finished the construction and uh, Hangzhou bamboo technology. Uh, led by the team of uh, Professor Qing Ling, who just made a presentation about the Bai Zhishan Mountain project. So conceptual design comes from the bamboo nodes and cavity. On this picture, you can see for every segment, we have a bamboo slab and the bamboo cavity, and they're interconnected. So we are using several segments to symbolize the five continents. And basically each bamboo slab is one continent. We use this project to do bamboo exchange and trade. So we try to symbolize the five continents. This is the final picture. Uh, due to terrain, it is L-shaped design with one big pavilion and four auxiliary side halls. And the L, we have uh, structural joints for the main hall. This is the overall structural design. So basically it is a bamboo structure. Then also below it, we have a steel framework and the bamboos are used for the rooftops. Because in China, you have to follow the building code. If you have a full bamboo structure, it's just not possible to pass fire protection inspection or to get license. So after careful consideration, we had to use it in this way. Bamboo uh, is put into the steel bamboo combined truss. And also we have some, in the third part, we'll talk about the fire protection de design. And this is inside the hole. Internally, we said it is L-shaped structure. It will be a circumferential direction 
and uh, horizontal direction. And you can see we have the upper chord with the steel and the lower chord bamboo arch structure. And steel and the bamboo form a common force. And the bamboo arch contribute about 60% of the load bearing of the composite truss. It's actually working. When we made the calculation, the bamboo arch is withstanding downward pressure. Only a very small segment in the middle will be extended on both sides. So for the main hole in the top left box, it has a series of five arches consisting of large arch and two small arches. The span of the large arch is 20 meters and the span of small arches range from 6.9 to 11.3 meters. And the ratio of rise to span is one to 6.7. And also on the top right, you can see the composite truss cross section. On the left is for the truss for the 20 meter span. It's basically three plus four plus four plus three, altogether 14 bamboo comb. It's a bamboo bundle. And on the right is for the 10 meter arch span. Bamboo bundle, 10 combs together. And also for smaller hole, we use the same configuration on the right for the truss. And this is the configuration of the four smaller holes. The, each span is uh, 10 meters and the rise span ratio is one to, one to 6.7. And the composite truss cross action is the same with the second one in the previous slide. This is the cross section of the truss and some nodes, details. And you can see here, the bundle, bundle are connected with bolts, just like the bamboo and the rattan pavilion and the Bai Zhishan mountain, they all use the similar bolts. And in our bundle, we have a inverted corner steel because for one bundle, once it's been compressed, and if connected by the bolts, we want to make sure that uh, because this is an arch, it will expand outward to prevent uh, vertical fracturing. We are putting a protective corner holds. And also this is the bolts. It's a professional bolts, but it's an improved version. Basically, it's a new types of screw with the cavity inside. This one I talked about before. We're using the three plus four plus four plus three configuration, circular bamboo section layout. Remaining are two plus three plus three plus two. And here you can see how it is connected with the main steel frame. The bamboo arch supports the roof are hinged and connected with the bamboo cord of the steel truss. This is for the 20 meter span a structural model. After calculation, while controlling its configurations and specifications. So basically the stress is only up to 10 to 20% of its total stress resistance or tolerability. So there's a huge amount of additional redundancy by using it. Now, the key issue is fire safe design. We said that bamboo, in China's building code, it is an eight category 
products. If you want to make it a permanent building, it's against the national code. So we did some experiment and we used uh, special precautions to make sure that it can withstand the 1.5 hour tolerance of high temperature according to the building code. So this trading center is a multi-level public building with no more than 24 meters in height. It is a second class fire safe configuration. The bamboo column cannot meet the fire safe standards. So we have to use special experiments and had an expert panel discussion and also took some precautionary measures. And also structurally, we try to make sure that it can withstand the fire and up to national building code. So this is the general idea. Because bamboos on the fire duress, no matter how you treat it, it will burn. It will catch fire. So for the composite truss, we have a spray protection measure. It is on the left and right side of the arch. And some of the mist will touch the bamboo arch. The other water mist will be in the insulation layer under the bamboo arch. It can isolate the fire. And also the upper part, which has contact with the calm, can basically resist fire to a certain degree. So the temperature will not go up and will be within the comfortable range. We used the experiment to prove this protective effect. So it will not lose the stress tension under fire duress. We have um, five rounds of tests, two real models being produced. Left hand is one to five scale model experiment. Right hand is one to one scale model experiment. I'm talking about uh, 20 meters width. We use the raw bamboo materials without using the steel structures, so it's safer. If we add these steel pillars, uh, the safety would be enhanced. This is the process of uh, our test and the experiment from the construction, fire introduction, spray, uh, temperature control. After the spray, one to two minutes, the bamboo arch temperature sharply reduced. And after that, we had a second round of spray. Finally, until the collapse of the bamboo arch. Seven minutes, 45 seconds, the bamboo structure completely collapsed without any treatment. Actually, we use this uh, calculation for the relocation of the people. And uh, according to our study, it has a sufficient time to relocate and disperse uh, the people. So it's quite safe. This is uh, the one-to-one -one scale model experiment process from the construction again to the spray. And you can see the curves. This fire load is being calculated according to the woods and timber. After the initiations of spray, within five minutes, the arch temperature reduced to the room temperature after five minutes. Through this simulation, 
we can verify that during the burning and after the burning, the arch can still withstand the roof. And we have tested the and the verified reliability of the structure against the fire. We use a steel bamboo combined structure with water spray system. You, you may not see this very well. This is a real combustion process. Uh, two sides of the arch, we use these uh, sprays and we have the fire control water tanks and uh, we use this uh, actual data to calculate uh, the results. So some highlights of our project. This is not related to fire prevention. This is uh, the outdoor exterior bamboo arch for the decoration purpose only. It has a huge span, 60 meters. And Li lean uh, outwards. So it used the hunting system and uh, under the steel structure to make it uh, uh, more strong. This is a verification of under the stress, uh, uh, what are the combined uh, situation. We have uh, 18 large span bamboo arches. The middle part of the bamboo arch is connected with a steel truss um, through a steel pipe. Uh, at the bottom of the bamboo arch, we connected with uh, concrete piers as a reliable support and also to protect it uh, from uh, uh, rainfall. And uh, from the aesthetic point of view, it's also more beautiful. This is the largest span bamboo arch. Between the two angles, the span stretches 60 meters and it's lean outwards. 15 meters and uh, hum with the steel structure. This is the drawing map. The bottom of the bamboo arch is also formally connected with the concrete buttress by steel shoes and the steel bars set in the round bamboo through high polymer cement mortar. You can see at the base, the steel shoes, uh, but on site, we change this into the aluminum coated envelope. This is uh, during construction. First, uh, we want to thank all the hardworking professional bamboo workers uh, uh, Thank their dedication and hard work. You can see the connections uh, between different uh, uh, raw bamboos and the installation site and uh, also installation of uh, prefabricated uh, materials. When we select construction team, this construction team go to the logging site. From the logging site to the uh, treatment, uh, drying process uh, and transportation to the final uh, construction site, you know, this is the whole cycle. This uh, reflects uh, the indoor arch. Uh, uh, 
we had some on-site uh, trials. The first one is uh, the ground assembly of steel and bamboo composite truss, hanging the whole structure together. In the middle, the picture shows after our calculation, high altitude trial assembly of steel and bamboo composite truss. The loading capacity with the self weight is good enough. So you can see this is uh, in the sky, we have the uh, assembly of the steel and bamboo structure. The third one. We had a, a lot of aluminum uh, materials in Du. So we also cover with a fireproof cloth to uh, protect the finished products. This is the outdoor construction and the installation. We had a pre-installation at the production site and then at the construction site, we uh, connect this with joints and the connectors. And this photo shows uh, the first uh, bamboo bundles. Uh, using the uh, crane system. Left picture shows the largest arch. You can see this hunting steel with a height of 15 meters. You can see we use the scaffold. In the middle, this is the uh, bamboo arch of um, outdoor installation. And this is the hanging site. And uh, right hand side is uh, the trial assembly of 20 meters span steel bamboo composite truss. Because it's very high, uh, 20 meters by using scaffold is very dangerous. So uh, we also use other uh, vehicles uh, to support uh, the whole process and it's safer. Finally, I want to share with you some uh, uh, built construction and architect architectures, just to relax and enjoy the beauty of the finished buildings. Left hand side is uh, the uh, designing drawings and the right hand side is the uh, completed product. You can see slight differences, but still very uh, amazing. Again, left hand side is the scheme effect and the right hand side is the real finished construction. During the construction, we took some photos and the upper uh, graph shows uh, the structure model drawing. Again, left hand side is the design drawing and right hand side is the bird view of the completed projects. You can see quite similar in shapes and colors. It's an uh, exhibition house. This on the west side. Originally, we want to use the round bamboo, but it's too difficult. So we replace uh, this uh, sculpture uh, by using the steel materials. This is the indoor bamboo arch with the inner decoration. 
indoor effects, outdoor effects being deformed to some extent, but being already uh, repaired. Yibin Bamboo Trading Center well demonstrates a project's implementation in terms of S&D, uh, S&T innovation, and also promote uh, the eco-friendly, sustainable, and low-carbon development. The completion of this construction had special significance because it showcase the bamboo architectures uh, breakthroughs in some key uh, technical aspects, in particular the fire control and prevention and the technical system of the key, uh, key links and uh, connections already reach advanced level. So with our continuous development, uh, we hope uh, these uh, conventional building materials of bamboo uh, can play a new role. Finally, I wish Yimba will benefit the global bamboo and rattan producers globally. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Peng. Again, right on time. Last month, I visited Yibin International Bamboo Industry Trading Center. This gigantic construction, be it outdoor aesthetic beauty and the indoor structure, I feel the flexibility and also the beauty and the simpleness and the complexity uh, hand in hand of the bamboo materials. I visited many unique bamboo uh, constructions. I personally uh, love very much those bamboo constructions, especially the flexibilities and the ductility of the bamboo materials, especially those bamboo materials combined with other raw materials like steel. It can be really complementary to each other with the nature feature of the bamboo as the materials together with modern steel and the concrete materials. The combination of these two, we it can, so I was a visitor to this trading center and also I want to take this opportunity to thank the experts and the team who paid, put a lot of heart and mind into this project. And with projects like this, we were able to raise the standards of bamboo structures and uh, we will make people feel that it's innovative, it's science-based, it's safe and it's durable, and more people will love and begin to use this. And uh, if you pass by Yibin, make sure that you go to this trading center to feel this grandeur of the steel and the bamboo hybrid structure. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have uh, finished the three uh, presentations from our special guests. Uh, they gave us a very good insightful knowledge, technical uh, cases and uh, sharing of real life projects. I've learned a great deal from their presentation. I want to thank them again. Okay, now let's go to the presentation part. I want to invite Ms. Liu Kewei, the Global Bamboo Construction Program Coordinator of INBA, and also the organizer of the uh, online conversation series. I want to thank Dr. Junqi, our communication officer, for moderating the previous session uh, by quoting all kinds of nice words and about bamboo structure. 
So I feel that all of you, you feel the naturalness of this material and how it is emotionally close to the users, the people. I want to thank Yang Jun and Qing Ling and Mr. Peng Baoming for telling us more about the bamboo calm and the traditional architecture with modern urban planning concepts and steel and bamboo hybrid structure. These are some of the latest technologies and the projects in China. We have received many, many questions from across the world. Now we have half an hour for Q&A. So the first question, it's actually my question. I want to ask uh, Professor Yang Jing. So the Chinese Academy of Engineering, the project is a very high level and uh, we have, it is headed by three national academicians and Inba is a member to this project. I want to know that at the Tsinghua University, what will be the outcome or deliverables of this national level research program? How will it affect the bamboo and the rattan industry in China? In future, what are the considerations of Tsinghua University? Uh, thank you very much. Bamboo structure is a cross-disciplinary faculty. I am at the civil engineering um, department, we focus more on structural science. Tsinghua University is a comprehensive university. We have uh, many other faculties, uh, especially the faculty of architecture, which is really strong. And uh, also we have other faculties and departments for the built environment. So in Tsinghua University, we have really solid foundation for the cross-disciplinary study of bamboo structure. So we hope that we can work with INBA and other international organizations and to basically um, make good progress on this. Thank you, Mr. Yang. We hope that in future INBA can continue to work closely with Tsinghua University and your various departments. And people ask a lot of questions regarding fire protection because the fire protection has always been a concern of many countries around the world, especially if you use you want to use a bamboo calm. It's re really difficult because the wall is very thin. It's not like wood. You cannot have a certain thickness to be carbonized and to be protected from outside. So for your project and also the uh, INBA pavilion in the 2019 Global Garden Exposition, what were you doing in order to meet the code of our production in China? It's actually from Teng Zhong and uh, Qing Ling. You have a lot of experience in these areas and for example, in the trading center, what did you do? And uh, what are the things you have done? What would be the experience you can disseminate to other people? Especially I know that nowadays, you know, in China, we are really strict. We are really strict with the fire protection and the, the departments of housing, they have a very strict requirements regarding fire protection. Are they having a stricter or more relaxed standards for firefighting? Okay, Mr. Peng. Well, this project, the project, I can only say that uh, we are doing something new But if you look at the overall firefighting requirements, it's just a very small step we are doing. Because in future, we will continue to have more resistance. Um, there is still, uh, but what we have done appear to be very reliable and the people trusting our design. 
in our design, we are using the insulation layer by the sprayed mist, water mist. And also for the whole building, we reinforced the fire protection standards. For example, we have water cannons, we have sprinklers, we have uh, exit uh, routes. But for bamboo itself in China, the building code is very fixed. Uh, for example, for the roof or facade, the load bearing materials must be class A material. And in bamboo, with the best available technologies or even with insulation coating, it will peel off. It will peel off. You can only use the passive insulation for fire protection. You can use only use a passive ways like a, a water mist. Uh, it will take some time before this technology is fully acknowledged by the building code in China. Well, this issue is really a difficult issue. I can add on to this a little bit. In the Yanqing Bamboo and Aratan Pavilion, at the time, basically, we were treating it as a non-durable project. Uh, there were fire protection bolts, but uh, the water pressure is not good enough. So we are treating it as a large span makeshift project. So basically, we understand how many minutes will it take to evacuate everyone make sure that people will be safe. And then the structure, before it is fully burnt and collapsed, the ground side will be safe. So we still have a firebox. It cannot hit the roof, but on the ground, we have a lot of bamboo exhibits. We make sure that those flammable things can be stopped from being new fire source. And then wait until the firefighters came. So we also have a 24 hour video surveillance. We need to have people to be there 24 seven. Uh, as the colleague just said. For the bamboo, it was difficult because the fire protection layer is just too shiny, doesn't look too good. And also it will peel off, it will touch it. So I have another idea here. Um, this idea is very similar to what the other uh, audience asked in the chat box. For example, when you, what about the core technologies? Well, not really hand over all the key technologies to bamboo itself. Bamboo is material that is having a lot of cultural connotation. We manufacture a lot of engineering, engineered bamboo. We have a lot of room for further growth. We don't want bamboo to save the world, right? Maybe engineered bamboo can take the lead and uh, Professor Yang Jing can make additional uh, you know, study, and then we come back to the raw bamboo. But you have to deal with the firefighting. If we want it to be fully fireproof, that's difficult. We have the Chinese Academy of Engineering. They have the inorganic adhesives. So what about that? Will that work? Tell us more. why you have such a project? Why is it important? So just now you said at the very beginning, Professor Academician Chen Zhenyuan was heading this. In China in the 19, 50s and 60s, he began to study the use of bamboo as a structural material. At the time, the civil engineering department had the two research orientation. First is the framework. The other one is the bamboo reinforced concrete, because at the time we didn't have enough steel. So the reinforced 
concrete with bamboo. Bamboo has a good ductility. Ductility. People wanted to use it to replace the steel frame inside the cement and try to see whether it works, whether it can reinforce the concrete. The other direction was the raw uh, bamboo uh, frame for the structure, structural frames. And later in the 20th century, um, 21st century, we began to use engineered wood. And that had a great impact on the use scope of wood. In theory, engineered bamboo can have the same effect. The engineered bamboo, it has much higher adhesives use than the wood. Then you need to have high quality adhesives. And that is a constraining factor. Many experts, they are doubtful about the use of engineered bamboo because truly it contains much more adhesives than the wood. What if it releases all kinds of toxic gases or after many years of weathering, it will lose durability. And once it is being burned, would it emit toxic gases? So that concern still remains, it's a reality. So especially regarding the engineer, the bamboo product, this is even more prominent. So for us, we provide consulting services. At the macro level, I don't really work on the technical details. Uh, Professor Chen, he, he chose this topic. He was not really hands-on. So we studied whether we can use adhesives. So what about inorganic adhesives? Uh, because in other structures, we already used inorganic uh, adhesives. We are wondering, is it possible to use it in the wood and bamboo? So he invited the Shandong Construction um, University of Architecture and their team already used the adhesives to make uh, the magnesium and the phosphorus cement and they're testing the inorganic adhesive. Now they can say that it's a possible direction. Inorganic materials are more durable, more fireproof, uh, resistant. They have uh, natural advantages over bamboo. Well, this is still an ongoing process. I hope it can get good results. Yeah, there is a question for your designing of a bamboo structure, especially in Baiji Shan Mountain. How long would be the duration for use? And how can you persuade the users or the owners about the cost benefit or cost effectiveness to select these new materials? This is a very good question. Actually, in our Baiji Mountain project, there is uh, some specialties because the owner, the building owner wanted very much to own this uh, bamboo structure, bamboo architecture. For the durability, it depends on the raw materials. Uh, for the bamboo, it can last uh, 30 years. Uh, but the raw materials provider should uh, provide the maintenance, especially after the initial five years. It's a paid service. So with this uh, regular paid service, uh, it can last 30 years. But maybe after 30 years, they are going to have another bamboo architecture because the base is there. So they can just uh, change the design. How can we persuade the owner or developers uh, this is a very special one. As I said, the owner, uh, he loves bamboo. But uh, about this uh, persuasion, it depends on the designer's ability because the designers are creating values and uh, especially the aesthetic values. If you can create very good aesthetic values, it is uh, value added, then it would be very persuasive. The expectations 
from the developers. Uh, originally, uh, the total cost would be the 10 million RMB yuan. After the completion of the project, including the indoor, outdoor, and also equipment, uh, fire prevention and control system, the budget, as I said, was 10 million. Um, but the real cost was uh, 14 million RMB yuan. After this project, different stakeholders had some site visit and uh, they even wanted to provide additional funding to make the architecture and the building more beautiful because they believe with this uh, beautiful uh, architecture and uh, it can create and generate more income sources because people would come and regard this as a view platform. It, it can be regarded as a, a building sales department. So they accept these costs. When we promote building materials, we do not promote materials per se. For example, when we promote this, uh, we cannot talk to the owners. We want to build you a steel structure or a bamboo structure. Instead, we have the problem solving attitude. What are your needs and uh, what are your demands and what are your problems? And then with these uh, demands and problems, we provide you most uh, suitable materials. After all, we are not uh, sellers of uh, raw materials. Uh, for our bamboo uh, architecture, you remember we used the round bamboo combs instead of using engineered bamboo, because uh, if it's an even larger scale, then we would uh, replace the round uh, bamboo combs with uh, the engineered bamboos. So you can see it suits the local conditions. So it's not uh, exclus exclusive materials, either or. You know the Louis Kahn's famous quote, brick, uh, what do you want to become? And in these uh, circumstances, uh, we would ask uh, Bamboo, what you want to become in the end? Um, engineered, uh, bamboos uh, can look like round uh, bamboos, but from the cultural and aesthetic perspective, maybe for this very project, uh, the architect has the professional taste to select the round bamboo. I got a lot of enlightenment from your answers. Uh, so actually, it's uh, uh, the uh, mandate of my department to uh, promote bamboo because I work in the communication and the outreach department. Uh, next question is uh, to uh, Professor, you talk about a large span of the bamboo materials. Uh, for this large span, how do you guarantee the durability, Professor Peng? Uh, you can see the drawing effect of this uh, exterior bamboo arch. Uh, with this uh, structure, we can withstand uh, uh, the rainfall. Uh, of course, uh, we cannot avoid uh, uh, any winds, uh, but we had some uh, coats outside the uh, uh, bamboo structure, some coating materials. As I said, um, with this uh, lifting process, uh, we, we can replace the components and parts when it reaches certain years. There's another question talking about the, the Yibin Bamboo Products Trading Center such a large scale span structure, what is uh, your maximum load? And for the fire resistant, can you expand the fire resistant hour from 1.5 to five hours? 
是说，刚这个一个这个经验比较轻。Talk about uh, withstanding of the strong winds because uh, the roof is very light, but indoor the span is only ten meters. Uh, the corner parts are uh, those parts suffer severely from the strong winds. For the corners, the wind withstanding load is. Uh, minus 0 0.2 to uh, 1.0. This is the pressure load of the wind. Talking about the extremes of fire resistance, the measures we've taken and uh, we use a uh, spraying method to protect the bamboo. As long as we keep uh, spraying, we can keep the bamboo temperature the room temperature so you have the expect uh, expectation whether we can expand this uh, 1.5 hour to 5 hour it depends on the how big your water tank is if you can continuously provide the water no problem thank you next question is to qin ling and yang jun on the 23rd we have a special workshop on the capacity building for the bamboo professionals. Still, I want to take to, uh, today's opportunity to talk about the capacity uh, building because uh, among attendees, uh, we have a student, Zongqing uh, University, the School of Architecture and Urban Planning. Uh, so we appreciate very much uh, the Chongqing University because you select our workshop as a credit uh, a gaining uh, course. So my question is to Yang Jun and the Qin Lin, according to your seasoned experiences, uh, how could we have uh, better proposals uh, to develop a bamboo related uh, uh, curriculum in the universities and any suggestions to Yimba to provide services uh, to universities teaching. We noticed that uh, a lot of attendees are from universities and colleges. There are faculty members and the students. So we want to talk with you. Uh, is there any possibility that uh, we can rally the universities uh, around the globe to develop some new bamboo related curriculum and courses? Yeah. Professor Yang? Yeah. Bamboo materials is relatively a kind of a niche, has niche market, not so popular comparing to other products. Actually, bamboo and timber both are having the niche markets. So bamboo even has a smaller uh, users. So in our school of civil engineering of Tsinghua University, the bamboo related uh, curriculum and course is very limited. In the past, uh, uh, some schools, uh, some universities have uh, steel and the timber related schools and the research institutes. But the uh, wood and the timber education actually is being stopped temporarily in universities. So you can imagine because China launched this uh, natural forest protection project and the logging ban. So as a result, uh, some of the studies and uh, teaching in the universities on these timber courses being stopped. But nowadays, uh, since uh, people are having better understanding about the sustainable development, uh, uh, some universities uh, restore the timber and the wood related courses. So bamboo as part of the timber civil engineering topic, maybe we can learn from the timber education. 
and also to promote uh, the curriculum development incorporating bamboo. I noticed some uh, teachers already produced uh, uh, some uh, training materials and teaching mater materials or textbooks. It's called the bamboo structure engineering. So our school has an integrated design course. Maybe under this integrated course, uh, uh, the students uh, can understand the steel, uh, uh, earth or wood or bamboo materials to finish their integrated uh, uh, civil engineering design. So you cannot imagine this bamboo design or engineering mass market thing. It's only a niche market thing. As long as we have a few students uh, select this course, it would be uh, satisfactory. So bamboo materials uh, has the advantages of light weight. So for the participatory uh, practices, it's easier. Students can participate in the bamboo structuring. Uh, I know in Tsinghua, they, uh, in the architecture school, they had a small workshop. So students can produce uh, stools there or small arty crafts in the workshop. A lot of uh, practical work. For the vocational training, we need a, a lot of uh, high level professional bamboo workers. Unlike other steel and iron workers, we need more sophisticated professional uh, bamboo workers. So maybe in the vocational training schools, uh, we can add some uh, courses or curriculums. Thank you. How about Qin Ling? Because uh, there are two aspects when we're talking about education, uh, on-campus education and the extracurriculum education. So I'm teaching the structure and the construction courses in my school. So when we cultivate and nurture students, we need uh, to cultivate a student's uh, abilities uh, in judgment and understanding. For example, as I said, when they make a selection round uh, uh, bamboo versus engineered bamboo, and that they should have a better perceptions and their understandings about the materials. I think even master architects need to keep understanding more about the material. The times are advancing. I have many students online because every year I have a course on engineering and architectural design and application. I feel that every year we can focus on the new topic of technology. Every year I invite architects to lecture my students, to share their real life challenges, issues relating to materials. As I said before, fire protection, you know, how do you deal with that? It's a very, very practical, integrated teaching approach. For undergraduate students, we worked on the materials. Specifically, I asked my undergraduates to use metal, wood, and uh, bamboo and uh, cement, concrete, and the bricks. They can choose one category out of the four. And first, decide on the nodes for the metal and uh, the uh, bamboo and wood. Their nodes are basically based on poles. And also, they look at the expression, the underlying rationale, and also they come up with the aesthetic rationale. So people who do, and uh, people who work with the metal, they communicate with each other. If you choose one category, you need to understand why you don't want to use the other three. It's not all about the one category of materials. You need to be very holistic and know everything about every material. 
is bamboo a new or an old material? It is traditional, but now we are processing it with advanced technologies. Professor Ting from Tsinghua University once said, the construction materials were discovered, but now we are rediscovering them with new processes. So I believe it largely depends on our understanding and the way we process them. Now, engineered bamboo appears to be better than bamboo calm. I guess it's just limitation of our technology. In future, we can study many topics. I think we're not facing students. We need to educate the industrial chain, the private companies, for example, like the bamboo structure. If you want to disseminate the bamboo structure, if you have a lot of technology barriers, I don't think engineering companies want to pick it up if you don't give them a good solution. At Inba, can you do more propaganda, publicity, worker some modulized, easy to fit products, right? You give them a readily available solution and then the companies, the businessmen can pick it up very easily. They don't need to ponder on this for days, years. Give them a good solution, starting from the easier stuff. Because you have to understand that those are businessmen, private companies. They want to use something of which you already have a good solution. I think Inba can do more publicity work, marketing work. We of course want to have further academic research, but also you want to be very practical, down to earth, work closely with the industry players. I think that is very meaningful. I know time's up for us. Thank you so much for your sharing. Just a very briefly, one or two sentences to wrap up the discussion, your understanding of the future of the use cases of bamboo. And I know the Chinese Academy of Engineering, your long range target is towards 2035. Can you each use a couple of sentences to wrap up? Mr. Yang, Professor Yang first. Professor Yang, you're muted. Unmute yourself, please. I think when Canada was pushing for wood, they said wood works. I just say bamboo works. Very simple. Okay. Professor Ting. So as an architect, if I want to use bamboo more extensively, I need technology support, feasible technologies. I don't want to see it as a full substitute of everything else. Yeah, I know you have academic background. I'm like an engineering guy, construction guy. Whatever design you gave to us, we figure out a way to make it happen. If we have an issue with bamboo, we will find a way to use it in our construction. Thank you very much. Going back to Jinqi. So thank you very much. Very professional moderation. I want to thank all experts. Thank you for your reaction. You solved my confusions too, cleared up my mind. So I've learned so much from you. I feel that I've read a few books already. Thank you so much. I'm also a consumer. And today I feel that I'm closer to the academic people. I just feel that in China compared with other materials, bamboo sound natural. 
low carbon, green environment. It has all these elements. It is. It sounds like an emerging material. It does have a lot of outlook. I pay more attention to the cultural elements behind bamboo compared with other ordinary building materials like cement or concrete or bricks. Bamboo looks to me like something that is full of culture. China has a very long history relating to bamboo. Every time I go to any place, when I see bamboo used in architecture, I just feel very close to it. It gives me a sense of warmth. It's actually different from wood. Bamboo traditionally in China has a lot of, as an, I know the architectural design challenges are huge, but I do want to see more bamboo architecture. I want to see more breakthroughs in the technology and the architects, the designers, constructors, your professional expertise can give us more opportunity to experience the beauty of bamboo architecture. I, in Beijing, it's a cold day today, but on this platform, we have so many people from across the world. We are all lovers of uh, bamboo and we can map out the future for bamboo. I feel very encouraged. I sincerely hope that with Inba's online platform, we can bring together more experts and scholars and practitioners or simply people who love bamboo. We hope the bamboo architecture in China will be ever more inclusive, practical, innovative, and contribute to the global development of bamboo and rattan industry. I guess time is up for today's platform. We are 11 minutes behind schedule. I want to thank you all, thank three experts, or the online attendees, audience, and friends, and my colleagues too. Thank you very much. I'm pointing their names. Thank you so much for your technical support. So I think we should have camera for everyone. Yes. So everyone, let's open our camera. So next Tuesday, at the same time, we will have the third installment of the session. Okay, thank you very much. Meet you next Tuesday, because next Tuesday, the same time, 
we will have another installment, uh, Beijing time, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m., basically the same time today. See you next Tuesday. We hope we really have a successful uh, session next Tuesday. See you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Stay healthy. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Okay, Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you, Professor Rika. Thank you. Hola, hasta la vista. Hasta luego. Ay. Ay, okay, Jinwe. Ay, ay. Hasta luego. <laughs> See you. Yes, Jane, thanks. Yes. <laughs>